Welcome to the AFR Saints channel, where we provide you daily content on your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to leave your comments below and smash that like button. Who that? Dennis Allen, after the Saints beat the Chargers on Friday, was asked about getting the roster down to 53. Here's what he said. Well, a lot of tough decisions. You know, I think by Tuesday at 3 o'clock our time, I think it is, we've got to, you know, get down to 53 players on the roster. And so, look, we're going to go back. We're going to evaluate this tape. There will be a lot of meetings, a lot of discussions to, to make sure we're, we're uh, you know, we're, we're keeping the right 53 for, for the New Orleans Saints and what we feel like gives us the best opportunity to win. Well, apparently one of those 53 will not be running back Abram Smith. Aaron Wilson, the first to have it. Nick Underhill tweeted it as well on Sunday that uh, Abram Smith, the running back from Baylor, was waived by New Orleans. So the process will be if no team puts in a waiver claim, the Saints could then re-sign him to the practice squad. Remember, if a player is on the practice squad, he's unprotected. He could be signed to any team's active roster at any point, but teams can't sign a player only to their practice squad from another team's practice squad. So they'd have to sign him to the active roster. Um, considering his production or lack thereof throughout camp, uh, my assumption is that Abram Smith is probably going to be safe and that the Saints will be able to retain him and sign him to the practice squad. At least I'm hopeful that's the case. We all know the story. He was a 1,600-yard rusher at Baylor last year. As a junior, they converted him to linebacker because they had a need. So you're talking about a super athlete, a guy that many thought would get picked. He went undrafted. The Saints paid him a lot of money, paid him six figures as an undrafted free agent, which is unheard of, um, to, to convince him to sign with the Saints. That's how much they believed in the player, which is why a lot of us got excited, me included, and my hands in the air. And leading up to the draft, running back was a big position of need that, that I know I focused on a lot because you know I'm, I'm not convinced that Mark Ingram has much left in the tank. You know, Alvin Kamara, we've all were assuming was going to face a suspension and that you were going to need running back depth. We've been through this a bunch. It's why we've talked about running back so much throughout this whole offseason and throughout camp and why we looked at basically every guy from Sony Michel, um, you know, all the way uh all the way through all the all the uh, Tariq Cohen who had the unfortunate injury. We talked about Darrell Williams, y'all, I mean, David Johnson, we've been through all of them. You know, which guy might be a fit for the Saints and they've been very patient and didn't go and add anybody. Of course, they've got Dwayne Washington, who they like a lot as a special teamer, Tony Jones Jr., who had a, a pretty good camp. But then, he again, he did last year as well. And when he had his opportunity in game situations, it the production wasn't there. So um, I'm hopeful for Abram Smith's future. It's, it may look, maybe this is just part of me, which is buried in my mind, because I've seen... Pierre Thomas and Chris Ivory and Kyrie Robinson. I mean, the Saints have kind of always done this, haven't they? They found that undrafted free agent running back diamond in the rough that's become a really productive NFL player. And maybe you know, I was assuming that that you know, Abram Smith could be the next one and maybe still will be at some point. It just doesn't look like it's going to be right now as he's been waived. Um, last week, we talked a good bit about Kenyon Drake. And... Other, the Raiders, look, Kenyon Drake has been a productive back when he's been healthy. And the Raiders cut him last week. He's a guy that, it just very, Raiders drafted two backs. They signed a couple of free agents. It was just very clear. Bring, Josh McDaniels coming in, brought his own guys. And I thought Kenyon Drake handled it like a pro, the way that, that he did publicly in his interviews and saying, look, they had their guys. It's a business. We'll move on. And I, I said, look, Kenyon Drake for the Saints – Makes a lot of sense. Went through the whole list of, of why Kenyon Drake with the Saints made a lot of sense. But one of the guys that the Saints publicly did pursue early, brought in for a workout and were prepared to make a contract offer to, was Sony Michelle. if you remember this. Saints brought in Sony Michelle and he ultimately made the decision to sign with the Miami Dolphins. At the time, we said it didn't really make a lot of sense. Competitively, financially, um, depth chart, it just didn't make sense to go to Miami except that Sony Michelle. It's from Miami. He was basically signing with the Dolphins and going to go play 15 minutes from where he grew up. So that part of it made a lot of sense. Nothing else in the Michelle to Miami made a lot of sense. I only bring that up right now because just minutes ago, Field Yates tweeted, the Dolphins have released Sony Michelle. Uh, so his stint there in Miami was short-lived. They signed him to a one-year, $1.6 million contract. Half a million of that was guaranteed. 
He did get, Sonny Michelle did get a $350,000 signing bonus. And the way they structured his deal was that he was going to get a $240,000 per game roster bonus. So for every game he was on the roster, they'd give him another two hundred forty k. So his contract was going to become valuable if he made the team and played more. In the end, in the end, basically got a three hundred fifty thousand dollars signing bonus of the five hundred k guaranteed. So he's going to get a half a million dollars for for about a month's work in Miami. And now you know Sony Michelle is going to be looking for a new team. And I think the Saints have got to revisit this. You know, Sony Michelle was just on the Super Bowl champions with the the Los Angeles Rams. We understand uh, the the depth they have at running back, and of course with Cam Akers there. When Akers was hurt, Michelle really filled that void. When Akers came back, his role diminished. But for Sony Michelle at this point in his career, a former first round pick out of Georgia, you know, of the New England Patriots, was there for three years. It didn't work out. Uh, look, he had two productive years. In his first two years, he went over 200 carries each of his first two years in the league. And then, you know, had the COVID year, of course, only played nine games that season for New England. And then they shipped him out to LA. And he played in all 17 games this year, primarily in a backup role, except for when they had the injury to Akers. He, he became the starter, had over 200 rushing attempts. You're still talking about a young guy in his physical prime, in, you know, in his 20s, who has been a starter, who's filled in a backup role as a reserve, who has been a good you know, pass catcher at times. Last year with the Rams, again, in a reserve role, caught 21 balls out of the backfield. So when they wanted to throw to the back out of the backfield, he was able to do that. I'm, as much as I was excited about the possibility of Kenyon Drake, I'm way more excited about the possibility of the Saints revisiting Sony Michelle. And this is why whenever we talk about, you know, and Michelle's 27 years old, but this is when we talk about um, you know, the, the final 53 when the rosters are set. It's never the final 53. It's always the first 53 because you set your 53-man roster and then you look at who else got cut and who may be a better option on your roster than a guy you have. So if you gave me the option today of taking Sony Michelle as my number two back or Mark Ingram, I'm taking Sony Michelle. I'm taking the guy who's five years younger, who's got way more tread on the tire, and who's a little bit more dynamic of a runner and pass catcher. So, and also, a year ago, in a pinch, when their stud young guy, Cam Akers, got hurt, Sonny Michelle stepped up and stepped into that starter role and performed. So, you know, if you do end up in a situation with Alvin Kamara where he ends up suspended, Sonny Michelle would essentially be in the same situation it was a year ago. So I, I don't know what the Saints are going to do. Uh, I'm bummed the Abram Smith um, situation didn't work out throughout camp. That happens. You took a flyer on a guy that you were bullish on, and maybe he will still be able to continue to develop throughout his career. But if you put all these guys on a list, you have yeah, Alvin Kamara, then it's Mark Ingram, Sony Michelle, Kenjin Drake, uh, Kenyon Drake, Abram Smith, Tony Jones Jr., Dwayne Washington. Just fill, fill out the list. Just, oh, say, which one would you take as your number two? Of all of those, I would take Sony Michelle without hesitation. We know that they can make the money work. And and he's a you don't have to give up an asset to get him. That needs to be your first call right now. You already had him in the building. He knows you like him. He, you already worked, worked him out. He knows the situation. He knows the offense. This feels like a no-brainer to me. Uh, the Saints could very well be hunting a running back, and Sony Michelle's back on the market. Uh, we'll see if the Saints might get in the mix for that uh, ASAP. I would strongly endorse that decision if they do. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact, and be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.